the debt limit debate that's uh, uh, upon us. Uh, but I want to start with a little bit of context, and we've touched on some of these things, but it's very important, I think, uh, to inform our judgment as we debate the debt limit. And I, I want to emphasize a point that Senator Thune made earlier. While we rightly focus on the level of our deficits and our debt, it's spending that's gotten us here. Um, since 2000, just since 2000, total federal spending has doubled. And so we have debts now, deficits now, far greater than deficits we were running recently. In 2007, for instance, as you know, Mr. Secretary, our deficit was only 1.2 percent of GDP. This year it's over 10 percent. It's over one and a half trillion dollars. Uh, this is a recent phenomenon. The public debt that we had in 1988 was about 41 percent of GDP. In 2008, public debt was about 40 percent of GDP. Today it's 64 percent, and by October it's going to be 72 percent of GDP. The debt's doubled in four years. It's scheduled to triple in 11 years. And as we discussed briefly earlier, but I really want to stress, this is a fraction of the problem that we have. The unfunded liabilities that we have, the contingent liabilities through the guarantees of Fannie and Freddie, the big entitlement programs, you know, we, can ar we could argue about how to do the math and, and how to discount this unfunded liability, and, but any way you do it, within reason, it's a number that is at least well into the tens of trillions, and it might be, as Mr. Johnson says, over a hundred trillion dollars. So any way you look at it, those obligations dwarf the numbers that we've seen on the board, the actual publicly traded debt. So I think we have an enormous problem, and it's already upon us. And what concerns me is what this administration has done in this environment. What have we seen? The administration created a new trillion dollar entitlement program, launched an $800 billion stimulus spending, pushed huge increases in discretionary spending in recent years. The president is now calling for another, basically a stimulus bill, $50 billion to build high speed rail, which is a, uh, I think would be a shocking waste of money. The president's threatening to veto a CR because the Republicans want to cut back the spending that was added in the last couple of years, and the President proposes a budget that increases our debt every year, and I think you acknowledge that CBO will observe that it increases it even as a percentage of GDP. And the President, as we have observed repeatedly this morning, does absolutely nothing about the entitlements that are ultimately driving this, this whole trade wreck. In fact, I think part of the problem is the administration is populated with people who think at some level, that the more government spends, the richer we all become. And I just have to say, this just isn't working. And I think this is dangerous. And I think the administration thinks it's working, but I don't. So when the president says that now that the country has, um, metaphorically speaking, reached the limit on its credit cards, and we should just give it a new one and not make any changes to the process, talk about that later. I just don't think that's a good decision. Now, let me, let me emphasize, and I've said this before, and I've said this to you, Mr. Secretary, I'm willing to vote to raise the debt limit. But I'm only willing to do that if we're going to make the cuts in spending and the changes in process that got us here. You have acknowledged that the process is broken. I just don't think we can kick this can down the road anymore. Now, we apparently disagree about whether we should make increasing the debt lim limit contingent on getting the kind of process reforms that fix, the, fix this problem. But there's one thing that I know we do agree on, and this is something I've also written about, and that is under no circumstances should the United States ever even get close to defaulting on the debt that we've issued. And I know you agree with that. It would be a complete disaster. It's unnecessary. We've got a moral obligation to repay people who've lent us money. And so, as you know, I've introduced a bill that would simply guarantee that as we try to resolve our differences over what to do about the debt limit, if we haven't got it resolved at the time in which we reach it, we would at least not default on our debts. And my bill would do that by simply requiring that the Treasury make as a priority payments on interest and principal with the ample resources the Treasury would continue to have. Now, you've argued that my bill doesn't work. And while at least implicitly you've acknowledged that, yes, you could continue servicing the debt, that even delays in payments to vendors would be perceived by the markets as as much of a default as a missed payment on a Treasury bond. So basically, you're telling us that if, if we have to delay a payment to the guys who mow the lawn around the mall, that would have the same kind of impact and cause the same kind of financial crisis that would result if we fail to make an interest payment on a Treasury security. I have to tell you, Mr. Secretary, that's just not true. 
Uh, I spent years as a professional in the bond market. I was trading fixed income securities, including U.S. Treasuries. But whether you're a bond trader or whether you're a pension fund manager in Pittsburgh or a senior citizen in Allentown investing your, uh, you know, your uh, IRA savings, the market knows the difference between delaying a payment to a vendor and defaulting on our treasuries. Secretary, uh, Chairman Bernanke was asked uh, last week at the Budget Committee in the House uh, if he thought it would be a good idea for the federal government to adopt uh, this kind of bill. His answer was, and I will quote, well, it would reduce the risk of the debt limit, that's for sure. So I have to say, I think it's been inappropriate for the administration to raise the specter of a default on our debt in the context of this debt limit, because you and I both know there is no circumstances in which we're going to default on our debt. Uh, we shouldn't even really have to have this discussion, because we know this. But since the administration has raised this specter, I felt it was necessary to try to clear this. I believe that we are already in the early stages of a fiscal train wreck. I think the problem is very, very serious. It's a spending problem that both parties are responsible for to varying degrees. The debt level, if you ask me, is already at uh, dangerous levels. Um, I just don't think we can kick this can down the road any further. And I think what the administration is implicitly asking us to do is to just go ahead and give them another credit card without making the fundamental process reforms that we need to get onto a sustainable path. May I respond, uh, Mr. Certainly. Senator, you and I probably um, disagree on less, less than you think. Uh, and, and I appreciate very much your review of history about what produced uh, this big acceleration of our debt burdens, because that's very helpful context for everybody. And I pr very much appreciate your commitment to making sure that people understand we will meet our obligations as a country. And you're right to emphasize the cost of not doing so. And we shouldn't let the markets uh, start to build any risk that Congress won't ultimately pass that increase we need. But I, I just want to make sure that I clarify one, one thing that's very important, which is that uh, we agree that we have to work together on a plan that Congress can enact that will start to deal with these very daunting, very formidable deficit challenges. 100 percent agree with you. That's critically important. We can't put that off. And again, we look forward to working with the processes that were set up here to try and make sure we, we achieve that. But I would caution everybody against taking any risk that Congress does not act to increase the limit within the time frame we need. Because for the reasons you said, we cannot afford to let the market lose any confidence that ultimately Congress will act well in advance of any time we're going to hit the limit because that would be catastrophic, would cause grave damage to the recession, to the, to the expansion underway, to our capacity to dig out of this recession, and we can't afford to take that risk. Senator Portman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.